Hello everyone. Here we give a summary of sampling distributions and where they are applied for statistical analysis. From one population, if we randomly pick up a simple sample, and we can get a sample mean. And the sample mean is related to the random sample. So the sample mean can be considered as random variable. When the population standard deviation sigma is known, the standardized sample mean will follow standard normal distribution. Here it is. With this sampling distribution, we can build up confidence interval x bar as the center, the margin of error come from z critical value and multiply standard deviation of sample mean. The basic notation is x bar representing sample mean, mu represents population mean, sigma is population standard deviation, and the lowercase n is sample size. The basic idea is a simple random sample. We use the mean as the center. With this center, we build up a confidence interval to tell about population mean. This confidence interval is built up under 1 minus alpha confidence level. With this confidence level, we can easily figure out z critical value labeled as z star can be found from excel function in a very convenient way with this sampling distribution we can use this standardized random variable as test statistic by calculating the value of this test statistic from one random simple sample data make conclusion for the hypothesis about the population mean, either two-sided hypothesis or one-sided hypothesis. When the population standard deviation is not known, we use sample standard deviation instead. Then the standardized sample mean will follow student distribution. It is called T distribution with degree freedom sample size minus 1. With this sampling distribution, we can build up similar confidence interval. Just the information replaced with sample standard deviation. Similarly, we can find out T critical value from Excel function very conveniently. We can also use this standardized random variable as test statistic with calculating this t test statistic value from random simple sample data make conclusion for the hypothesis about population mean either two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis the similar idea can be applied to two populations as well when we consider two independent populations, we randomly pick up one sample from each population. Then we have two independent samples. By using these two sample means, we can get some idea about the two population mean difference. So the sample mean difference would be considered as a random variable. So the standardized random variable sample mean distance, sample mean difference, follow standard normal distribution again. If population standard deviation sigma 1 and sigma 2 are known, it is a very similar idea and we can build up confidence interval. Of course, the difference of sample mean would be the center. Similarly, z critical value can be found from Excel function. 
And we can also use this z-test statistic by calculating the value from two independent simple random sample data make conclusion for the hypothesis about population mean difference either two-sided hypothesis or one-sided hypothesis if the two population standard deviations are not known but we can assume two population have equal variance in this kind of situation the two independent samples can be mixed together as one big sample this is called a pooled situation when we use this pooled technique the standardized sample mean difference also has student distribution with degree freedom n1 plus n2 minus 2. the pool the variance is expressed like the formula on the screen and we can build up the confidence interval with a similar structure similarly t critical value can be figured out from excel function and we can use the standardized t test the statistic to make decision about the hypothesis for population mean difference either two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis in the general situation if we do not know the population standard deviation we cannot make assumptions say they have equal variance then the standardized random variable from sample mean difference still follows t distribution just the degree freedom would be calculated in this formula it looks complicated but convenient be calculated in excel similarly we can build up the confidence interval and the corresponding t critical value can be figured out in excel conveniently and we can use the standardized random variable as t test statistic by calculating this t test statistic value from two independent simple random sample data we can make a conclusion for the hypothesis about the population mean difference either two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis all this idea can be applied for estimating another population parameter proportion or test a hypothesis about the population proportion we all understand there's some kind of relationship between binomial distribution and normal distribution that is why the proportion from sample being considered as a random variable when we standardize this random variable it follows standard normal distribution here it is p bar is the sample proportion p represents population proportion n is the sample size for random variable p bar when it is a standardized the standardized random variable z has standard normal distribution based on this we can build up confidence interval with sample proportion mean uh, with sample proportion as the center and the margin of error come from the z critical value multiply the standard deviation of the random variable p bar when the confidence level one minus alpha is preset and we can easily find out z critical value from the confidence value from the confidence level by using excel function similarly we can use this test statistic by calculating this test statistic value from 
one random simple sample data make a conclusion for a hypothesis about population proportion. Either two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis. Similarly, we can extend this idea to two population. In that case, we are comparing two population proportion. We pick up a random simple sample from each population and we come out two sample proportions. P1 hat represents the first sample proportion from first population and the P2 hat represents the sample proportion from second population. The standardized difference of two sample proportions has standard normal distribution. In that case, we can build up confidence interval like this with very similar structure. It is used to estimate the population proportion difference. Again, Z star is the critical value from confidence level 1 minus alpha can be easily found from Excel function. We can also use this standardized sample proportion difference as test statistic by calculating this test statistic value from two simple random sample proportions. And we can make a conclusion for hypothesis about population proportion difference, either two-tailed hypothesis or one-tailed hypothesis. In the similar condition, if we can assume two population has equal variance, then we can pool our sample data together again. In this case, standardized random variable two sample proportions still has standard normal distribution, but the calculation is simpler. The pool, the sample proportion being used. When we have two sample value pooled, so we can easily buy counts after we mix the two sample value together to get the pool, the sample proportion. Then we can build up confidence interval based on that sampling distribution. It has similar structure, and we can easily figure out the Z critical value by standard normal distribution function in Excel. The standardized sample proportion difference can also be used as a test statistic by calculating this test statistic value from two simple random sample proportions we can make a conclusion for hypothesis about the population proportion difference, either two-sided hypothesis or one-sided hypothesis. When we think about another typical parameter, variance, the chi-square distribution would be applied. If we want to estimate population variance or test statement about population variance. We use the sample variance, the random simple sample from the population. The variance would be considered as a random variable, kind of standardized random variable of the sample variance follows chi-square distribution. With this sampling distribution, we can build the confidence interval with this sampling distribution, we can build confidence interval based on confidence level 1 minus alpha to estimate the population variance sigma square. Here we have chi L square and chi U square represent lower chi square critical value and upper chi square critical value. Similarly, we have chi square statistical function in Excel can be easily applied to find out this lower chi-square critical value and upper chi-square critical value. This chi-square can be used as test statistic by calculating the value of chi-square from sample variance. We can make conclusion for the hypothesis 
about population variance, either two-sided hypothesis or one-sided hypothesis. Chi-square test statistics can also be applied for goodness of fit test. Goodness of fit test is applied to find whether the actual data observed for a random variable fit in a particular probability distribution. In that case, the chi-square statistic being built up with this expression by calculating all the possible differences from observed data value and expected data value. Of course, expected data value would come from the particular probability distribution in our mind. OI represents observed value for the i's category. EI is expected value from i's category. K means number of the categories. Little requirement is about the sample size should be large enough. So, Normally, we would require the EI values bigger than 5. The categories should be combined to generate large enough expected category values if sample size can be increased. By calculating chi-square test statistic value, we can make decision for the hypothesis about distribution. So the hypothesis model here is different from what we have seen earlier. They were all about population parameters, either population mean, population proportion, or population variance. But here is about the whole distribution. So now hypothesis is random variable has the expected distribution. Alternative hypothesis is random variable does not have the expected distribution. So that is how chi-square test statistic being applied for goodness of fit test. And chi-square test statistics is also applied for testing independence or called homogeneity. It's also called contingency analysis. When two variables, the possible values being listed in the contingency table, we can build up the chi-square test statistic by calculating all the possible difference between observed frequency and expected frequency. Chi-square test statistic value is calculated from the data collected in the contingency table. From this value, we can tell if two variables in the contingency table are independent. So the hypothesis model being written this way, now hypothesis means two variables are independent. Alternative hypothesis means two variables are not independent. Similarly, when we consider two populations from chi-square random variable, we can build up another random variable, f. It's also called f test statistic, simply by using one sample variance divided by another sample variance. Two independent samples come from two independent populations. F test statistic carried two degrees of freedom. D1 come from sample from first population, D2 from the sample from second population. We use this F test statistic to test whether the two populations have equal variance. The hypothesis model can be two-sided or one-sided. F-test statistic is also applied in one-factor analysis of variance. The ratio comes from the observations of multiple samples from multiple populations. When we consider multiple populations, we try to see if any one of the population means 
would be significantly different from the others. So the F test statistic value can be used to tell if there is a significant difference among multiple population means. The hypothesis can be described as all the population means are equal. The opposite part, alternative hypothesis, would be at least two of the population means are different. Or we say at least one of the population means different from the others. Similar idea can also be applied in two-factor analysis of virus. So by now we should have a whole picture about many different kind of sampling distribution models are applied for doing statistical analysis. We apply them by calculating test statistic value from sample data to tell the corresponding population parameters or population distribution.